Today we're diving deep into the Creators app by Sony. This is going to be the ultimate way to control remotely your camera, transfer files, backup stuff to the cloud, and even add GPS info to your files. Plus there are some pro tips and hidden settings along the way. Okay, first of all, these are the supported cameras. So you should check if your camera is listed here, otherwise none of these will work. Plus, you need to have the most up-to-date firmware to be able to use all of the features. To check which version of firmware you're using, the last menu with the settings, go to Setup option, go down to Version, and then choose Body. You're going to be able to see which firmware version you are right now. Then to check for updates, just go to the Sony website, search for your model of camera, and see which is the latest one. Usually, the procedure is always the same and it's very simple and fast to do. You download the firmware file, put it in an SD card and into the camera. Boot it up and come back to the same place here to check the version, but this time you're gonna do the software update. Camera will boot, it's gonna take a couple of minutes, and then you're gonna be on the latest version. Now this video is part of my Sony series, so if you're interested in wireless shooting video, you can check out this video here, where I talk all about the monitoring control app. If you're more interested in replacing your external monitor, I did an extensive test and usage of the Monitor Plus app that you can also see here, or the links are gonna be in the description. Once your firmware is updated, you're ready to start connecting the camera to your phone. So let's do that right now. So first thing is downloading the Creators app from the Play Store or App Store, and you're gonna be able to see this icon over here. I'm just gonna open it. Actually, first thing you wanna do is come up to the right and go to this person icon and sign in. And this is gonna be helpful when we start talking about the cloud features of this app. All you need to do is create an account in the Sony website and log in here. Okay, so now that we are logged, I'm just gonna go back to the first page and go to connect to your camera. And this is going to be a two-step process. First, we're gonna connect the camera using Bluetooth, and then they're gonna establish a Wi-Fi connection, which is much faster. Okay, so now we're gonna go inside the menu here, and we're gonna go to the connections menu, which is this one. And inside, we're gonna find smartphone connection. Now here, just proceed to do next, choose the model of your camera, and you're gonna get to this screen here. And this is a very awkward user interface because it looks like it's pairing, it says that it's pairing, but you actually have to click on it so that it opens this window and then you can click Start Pairing. Now we have to tap OK on the camera to be able to pair with it. It's gonna prompt us here, we just click Pair, and then it's gonna be available. Now on the camera we can just press OK, and here on the app I'm gonna choose 5 GHz because it's gonna make the connection much faster. And from this point on, you can already see some information being broadcasted from the camera here to the app, like the battery level, how much time left on the SD cards I've got, and some of the settings that we're going to be able to see. Okay, but now that we are connected, let's see what this can do and let's start with the remote shooting. You're always going to be able to choose between cabled or Wi-Fi connection, I'm just going to go for the Wi-Fi connection. Now we're in the remote shooting section of the app. And now the first thing you're gonna notice is that we have here the option of choosing which kind of mode of operation we want for the camera right now. And as you can see, I'm in video, menu, and the app completely overrides what the camera is set to do. So even changing manually here right now to photo mode, it won't change. So you have to come here to the app and just change it manually to this one to be able to shoot photos. So as you can see, we can also shoot videos from here, but it's not the best interface to do so. With photos, now you can see how many shots you can take with SD card one and two, what's the aspect ratio, which kind of JPEG are we taking, and the battery percentage of the camera right now. White balance is here, and you can just set to one of the presets or set it manually. The focus modes are all here, and you have shutter, aperture, and which kind of shooting mode you want. Single, continuous, timed, you can choose the same ones you can choose in the camera. ISO and metering are here, and the green play button is gonna show all the files that were transferred already to the app. Let's take a new shot by tapping and holding on the shutter button so that it's gonna focus and just releasing. And it automatically shows you the preview. If you want a simpler screen mode, you can just click display and it's gonna disappear with all the controls. Now, some of the settings are not available in the main interface, otherwise it would be really crowded. So you can just come up to the menu and you're gonna be able to see which kind of RAW are you shooting, if you want variable shutter or not. The aspect ratio is actually changed in here. And if you're shooting video, you can also change the movie format, what's the frame rate, and the record settings that you would like. Now here there's a very important one, which is live view quality. In here you're gonna choose if you want just for it to work really well, or if you want the image quality priority. Bear in mind that depending on the connection quality, you can sometimes feel that the image is maybe slightly out of focus, but it's just because of the image being transmitted here. 
One thing you might want to change is the review image and for how long. As you saw before, it took two seconds displaying me that image, but you can set it to always on and keep it there or simply off so that it can keep shooting. Grid lines are activated here. And this is a very nice one, which is location information. You can actually set it to save the GPS information, precise location information into the file metadata. Plus, when shooting video, if you want to have the red outline, just to be sure that you're really recording, you can set it here in the emphasized rec display. These are the main settings, so let's just go back. And by the way, now you see a satellite icon just here. When previewing the fire, you can also see the detailed information from it, like which lens you shot, what's the image size, what was the camera, or the metadata that is written inside the fire. By the way, if in any moment you feel like the preview is a bit choppy and it's just not following the movements of the camera very fluidly, you can disable Bluetooth. Because by now, your connection to the camera is through Wi-Fi. Bluetooth is just used for the discovery and the first connection. Okay, let's go back to the main interface and see which other options we have. Camera settings down here. Let's begin with setup. And here we have location information linkage. And this is what's going to allow the constant linkage between smartphone and camera to provide the GPS information. So I'm going to turn it on. And as long as you have the Bluetooth function enabled, the smartphone is going to be able to provide this information to the camera. You can adjust the date and time format that you prefer on the camera. And by going back to the previous menu, let's go now to differential import settings. This is going to enable a button that allows us to download only the images that we haven't imported yet in the smartphone. So I'm going to say yes. And you can choose the image size for importing. Let's say that I want the original one. And the importing file format, you can just choose whichever you prefer. Now transfer notification settings, it's very good that it's on, by default it's going to be like that. So this is going to tell you if something has been uploaded to the cloud or not. Okay, finally, let's talk a little bit about file transfer and cloud backups to Sony's cloud, but also to Lightroom and Google Drive. And as you can see, there's a cloud icon up here already. And this is where you're going to see the upload progress from the smartphone to the cloud. Right now, we're not uploading anything. So let's try that first. Down here, you're going to have the option to see the files you've got on the app and on the cloud. And as you can see, we have 25 gigabytes available for that. So on the smartphone, I'm just going to pick the latest file that we shot and I'm going to click this upload to cloud button. I'm just going to choose the folder called folder. And we're automatically taken back to that page in which we can see that it's processing and it's uploading the file right now. Now you don't need to be here waiting for it. You can just close it, but actually it was quite fast. So now let's check the cloud tab over here. Let's check the settings up here because there are some very interesting things to configure. First one is that you can set a folder to be monitored so that anything inside of it is going to be automatically uploaded to the cloud. If we go inside, you're going to be able to see that you can set to automatically upload imported images that you manually ask to bring from the camera to the app or images that you shot remotely. So if you just shot using the app, it's going to automatically go to the cloud. And also you can set which kind of files, JPEG, RAW or movie files. Now here, a very important one. Upload communication settings allows you to choose if you want the transfer to be made only via Wi-Fi or also using mobile networks if you do want to consume your whole internet package to upload the files. And after a while, finally, we can preview the file on the cloud itself. And you're going to see that we have some options down here like rating it, sharing, downloading, moving to another folder or simply deleting it. OK, so now I'm going to take one shot directly on the camera by pressing the shutter button here. And that's it. So now we have one shot that the app did not import. So I'm going to go to differential import Wi-Fi connection. OK. And it says that it's going to import images shot after the previously imported images. I'm going to say OK. And now it's checking how many files have to be imported. And in this case, it's telling me that there are four files remaining. Two, one. And that's it. All the items were copied. If we set up the app so that it always maintain a connection with the camera, even if the app is closed, it's going to be able to transfer files like that. Let's check which files were imported. Now that the files are all here, you could simply proceed and upload all of them to the cloud just like we did before. Or if you set the automatic upload, they're going to be in the cloud already. Now, just remember that this is making the files come from the camera to the smartphone and from the smartphone to the cloud. This is very practical because you have then an almost automatic backup of your files in the phone, not only on the camera. And usually it's the smartphone that you have on at all times. So this is a very good way of making this backup on the cloud. But if you don't want to have your smartphone in the middle of the way to doing this, you could actually upload the files to the cloud directly from the camera. Let's see how that works. 
So in this case, you have to come to camera settings and you have the cloud function. Okay, so let's start the settings here and I'm gonna have to set up the camera Wi-Fi and link the camera with the cloud and then do the settings. Let's do it. So first of all, set up the camera's Wi-Fi. Now the camera starts searching for an access point and here we have it. The first one is gonna be mine. This access point is already set. Now I'm gonna start linking the camera with the cloud. It tells us now to follow the instructions on the app. And after a while, it even says here, after 30 seconds or so, it's gonna jump to the next screen. Okay, so cloud upload, let's go to the settings and let's see which images to upload. In this case, I'm not gonna choose any of the videos. I'm just gonna choose the JPEG files and save it. Now here, it gives you a little briefing on how to make it work. Now, once it's all done, now the cloud function menu, it's gonna take us back to the settings. And here we're gonna have cloud upload and we can turn it on or off. We can see again, which kind of formats are we uploading from which SD slots and something very interesting, also the conditions. So for example, you could choose just to upload your five star images to the cloud, not everything. The folder is gonna be different in this case. It already named one called 7 Mark IV. Okay, so I guess it's time to test it. Now for this test to work, I need to shoot something only with the camera without using the smartphone. But as I set the JPEGs to be uploaded, I'm just gonna go here into the menu and I'm gonna set it to shoot RAW plus JPEG so that we have both of them. I'm gonna take one. And as you can see on the screen, we have a cloud icon and that also we had an exclamation mark there. So let's see if this is going to work or not. Now we're just gonna have to wait for a minute or so to see if these files are gonna pop up in our cloud space or not. In theory, they should. But if in a rush, you can also transfer using a cable. And depending on the quantity, it can be quite faster. Another feature that I'm not gonna be able to show you guys because the 7 Mark IV is not enabled for it is to download LUTs from the cloud into the camera itself. It's an even better way of seeing what's happening instead of just using the gain assist. Now here, there's one extra step that you might be interested in, which is also backing these files up to Lightroom or to the Creative Cloud and also to Google Drive. For both of them, you're gonna go to the left menu here and up on the profile settings. And there's going to be the linkage with both of these services. Basically what you're gonna do is log in and then the Creators app is gonna have access to one folder on both of them. Now what's gonna take time here is just for the camera to upload the files to the Creators app or Sony's cloud. But once there, it's really fast to these two services. And one thing that I discovered later on is that for you to see the upload progress from the camera is not on the camera. You can also see it from the app itself. So just go to the storage menu and here in the cloud part, you're gonna be able to see also the list of uploads from the camera. While in that first cloud icon in the main page, you see only the uploads from the smartphone. I said the interface was a little bit confusing. Now for my preference, I also like to put an auto upload from the smartphone to the cloud. But here there's a catch. These files are not gonna be automatically backed up to Lightroom or Google Drive. These ones, you're gonna have to send it manually. And to do that, you just go to the share button, like you're gonna send it to someone. And actually here, you're gonna have the option to send to both of these services if they are linked correctly. Now here, everyone is gonna have a different workflow, but one that I like, for example, is to simply shoot with the smartphone connected to the camera so that I have all of the raw files imported into the smartphone and automatically imported into Lightroom and the JPEGs to be backed up automatically to the creator's app or to Sony's cloud and later when I have a good Wi-Fi connection to upload also the raw files. But it really depends on how critical is the situation and if you have a good Wi-Fi available, if the raw files are important in that moment, it's up to you. Okay, let's wrap it up and let's start by saying that this is a huge progress in comparison to the Imaging Edge app. Although the interface and the menus are a little bit all over the place, it works much better, it's much more stable and the photo shooting experience you have with it, it's actually pretty good. Importing the files is very fast and having differential importing is key. If you're on the go and you don't have a computer, you can simply take your smartphone and SSD and you can back up everything here and also to the cloud. The cloud sync to Sony storage and also to Google Drive and Lightroom is amazing. And having the GPS tagging is just incredible. Another thing to notice was that sometimes it wasn't that fast to connect from smartphone to the camera, especially when the camera was connected to the access point to upload files directly. This Wi-Fi network change wasn't as fast as I would like sometimes, but when it is finally connected, it worked pretty well. Okay, let me know in the comments if you have any doubts about this app. 
and how you're planning to use it in your workflow. In the meantime, you can go watch this video over here, in which I talk about the monitoring control app that is so good that they even linked inside the app we're talking about today. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!